What's up, you certified beauties? It's Nick here back with another video. And today we're gonna to be talking about how to file taxes when you're self-employed. And I'm gonna give you guys some tips for tracking and claiming some expenses while doing so. So if you may have noticed from watching my videos that I now have ads on my channel, uh, which means I am officially monetized on YouTube, which means I am getting paid which therefore means that this is officially a side hustle and now I am officially self-employed or a freelancer. So in doing so, um, I'm gonna be going through myself personally, uh, some things regarding uh, self-employment tax and claiming expenses and stuff. And a lot of you actually in my comments have been asking me for some self-employment tax tips. So I thought this was a perfect time and a perfect combination to kind of uh, make videos regarding this as I actually go through this myself. So, you know, while I'm giving you guys these tips, I'm actually taking these tips for myself and putting it towards my side hustle as well. So freelance taxes, uh, they apply to, you know, your small businesses, your freelancers, your self-employed individuals, uh, any information on these kind of taxes can be found on the CRA website or by talking to uh, your trusted accountant. But this video is just meant for a quick overview when it comes to taxes for us freelancers. So the first question I have um, is, should I actually be filing taxes as a freelancer? Uh, and the answer, the short answer is yes. Uh, basically, as soon as you start receiving income from your side hustle, you're actually required to report it to the CIA, CRA, not CIA. Um, so even if it's just a couple bucks, couple hundred bucks here or there from doing something on the side, uh, you're technically supposed to report that um, and not doing so would actually be considered tax evasion. Now, if you have this small side hustle and you, know, you only make a few hundred dollars, it's very unlikely that the CRA will come after you but if they do catch you, uh, it's not really a, ch a chance that you wanna take because there are some serious penalties uh, associated to you know, avoiding tax basically. So uh, you wanna be compliant with the CRA or wherever you're, you're living, but this video is for Canada in particular. But in all aspects, wherever you are, if you have a filing requirement, you do wanna be compliant. However, there is no legal obligation to register your business as a self-employed or freelancer as long as you are under your own name. So if I'm charging people or if I'm getting paid and I'm creating invoices under my own name, if my name's Tom Smith and I just say make this check payable to Tom Smith, you're not obligated uh, to register a business name. But if you decide to invoice under uh, a business name such as Nick's Taxes or you know Bob Smith and Co or whatever uh, you want to call yourself you do have to register that in the province that you live in so that's up to you there is a fee associated to registering a business name you have to go online to your province and and register and do all that each province is a little bit different so we're not going to get into that for the sake of this video but it's up to you totally most clients I don't think are going to care you know how you're invoicing them or how they're going to be paying you if it's under your name or under a, a different business name um, that's totally up to you so now that you are a freelancer you're supposed to be filing your taxes and filing your taxes means you got to keep record of all of your income and you know if you're smart you also want to keep record of all of your expenses as well so expenses relate to your business okay and most people what they'll do is they have a spreadsheet to track all the income and expenses. Uh, some use, uh, some have folders or binders or something to hold on to paper receipts or people use apps, whatever you wanna get into. We can make more videos regarding expenses later. Um, but we'll go on to the next thing and that is actually filing your taxes as a freelancer. So um, personal, personal uh, tax and side business income, um, it's all taxed as personal income. And it's just gonna go um, into your net income minus all of your expenses that you had for the business. And 
likely this is going to end up on line 104 line now it's 104000 i believe on your tax return uh, and that's going to be a section called employment income not on a t4 slip and that is likely where your business income is going to um, show up so when you're filing your taxes you're going to be filling out form t2125 this form is a statement of your business activities which covers your income and your expenses on this form is going to be a full list of different expense categories in which you can claim uh, so you can take a look there and you can deduct any reasonable expenses that are related to the cost of your business. So for casual freelancers such as myself, the following are things that you might want to claim as expenses if it's applicable to you. These are things like advertising, cell phone bill, internet bill, meals and entertainment, office supplies, and travel. It's important to note that uh, personal uses uh, cannot be claimed as expenses. So for example, home internet bills, uh, if you're only using your home internet, you know, 20% of the time for your freelance work, you can only claim 20% of your bills. Next important thing uh, in Canada is GST slash HST registration. So if you're a freelancer, self-employed taxes remain pretty simple when your income is less than 30,000. Uh, as you're at that point still considered a small supplier. As soon as you start making over 30,000, you have to register for a GST or HST number. And it's important that you keep tabs on this because the CRA isn't. So you need to keep track of this yourself to find out when you, when you pass that threshold in order to register. Uh, because if you don't and the CRA finds out, uh, you can be penalized later. So you need to get an HST number and then once you get that HST number uh, you start collecting taxes what you charge obviously depends on what province the business you're charging your taxes is um, for example if you're based in Toronto but you do work uh, for a company based in Quebec you might charge them GST of 5% you don't need to charge companies outside of Canada any taxes since they are uh, zero rated according to the CRA, but it's important to understand uh, what province you're doing business in and the applicable taxes. The other thing regarding taxes is if you start owing taxes more than $3,000 in a year, uh, the CRA is going to st start asking you to pay uh, installment taxes. So this is basically paying your taxes on a quarterly basis. So that way at the end of the year in April, your tax bill isn't that high. And so everything kind of stays under that $3,000 mark. So if you end up owing more than 3,000 for a year, then you're probably gonna get a letter in the next couple months asking you to pay installments. Next thing I wanna talk about is just keeping track of your expenses. So a lot of people do things differently. Uh, you can use Excel, you can use a notebook. Um, a lot of people will use actually QuickBooks for the self-employed. They have an app for Android and iOS, uh, but it all depends on, you know, what you're most comfortable with and what your business is as well. Some businesses will be easier to do online versus some you might have to use more receipts and, and writing things down. But um, you wanna make sure that your expenses ideally align with the T2125 form from the CRA and that way it's easier to track and then easier to kind of sum at the end when you're uh, filing your taxes. You can just put them right into each applicable expense category on that T2125 form. So we'll go into more details on different expenses and whatnot on that T2125 as well as some different, uh, some different tips and tricks along the way. But uh, this is just a kind of a, an overview for you know a quick tax guide for freelancers and we'll get into more detail later but yeah handling freelance taxes can get pretty complicated pretty quickly so if you're ever in doubt i always recommend hiring a professional accountant uh, to help you out or to give you some advice um, a good accountant might cost you a little bit uh, but there is a good chance that you'll end up saving money on taxes um, and they'll the money that you actually save on taxes will probably cover the fee that they're going to charge you um, and they can unlock some potential deductions and expenses that you may not know about uh, so always give that a look but that is all for today that's going to be my video on taxes and self-employment 
So I hope you got value out of this video. If you did, uh, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing. I'm going to make more videos on uh, tax tips for self-employed and freelancers in the very near future. Uh, so make sure to subscribe and stay tuned for those as we'll kind of walk through a lot of different tips, tricks, and strategies. So if you got value with this, out of this video, please uh, let me know in the comments below. And I will see you guys in the next video. Happy taxing.